it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I think it's a very beautiful scenario to smash the world, no? Like, I mean, to, to think, to think, imagine how we can um, smash and create a kind of a space that we can feel like, that, that we can enjoy, you know, that we can have joy. And this was the idea, and I'm very happy that this could happen because it actually was a, a long way to make this happen. I'm very thankful for Marina, uh, for you, from the uh, students from the class of Marina, post-conceptual class, and queer base, Ara, Silent University, welcome all of you that are here today. Um, yes, uh, the idea, the concept is actually that we, uh, we are going to have like, a lot of inputs from, from the lecture performance, workshops, um, the gathering, but the, I think the main thing is like being together. So don't forget that, actually. I know that it seems a stress because every time that I say, let's enjoy, so it's already a kind of a pleasure of enjoy, to have joy. Uh, the history of marginalized people, BPOX, black people, POC, you know, racialized people, we, we are not actually allowing ourselves to enjoy because the pressure in the, the, that we live, you know, mostly of us struggling all the time, is not coming easily, like this kind of taking consideration that to, to have joy, and I mean, I, when I say joy, here is a, there are different concepts of having joy in life, but I mean, but the idea was to have this gathering together, to get to know each other, like to, to look at each other, to see each other, like to listen to each other, like this is, this is what Smashing Words is about. It's about actually uh, to have the possibility of encounter, and these encounters sometimes, because I mean, so it's not that uh, we all, uh, everybody think the same, but I think this is like the, the possibility of, of listening and learn and unlearn. Yes, so welcome to his machine world. I want to, <laughs> I, think, I think it's like, it's a beautiful jingle if you do his smashing world. Let's go, th let's everybody, welcome to smashing world. Yes, Marina, you make more the formal one now, like please. Let's play the academic one. Like, <laughs> okay, it's true. Nobody can have this energy and this kind of uh, improvisation that is on the spot. So first, I want uh, to thank Marisa Lobo, and I think we have to clap our hands because of this unbelievable work. Then it's uh, Maria and it's Gabi, and it's all the others who are working with Bewegung, culture and in Bewegung, and Vidic. Yeah, okay. Okay, Vidic is this main organization. So we are here part of this uh, European project, and uh, uh, when we were invited, it was invited to the Fachbereit uh, Konzept Kunst, uh, that means uh, uh, we uh, started to work and exchange, and because of COVID-19, uh, it actually came out uh, very important, super important uh, project and also super important possibility for all of us to be here. And uh, the idea of today is the first part was the exhibition. And this exhibition was uh, from the 23 of June in two parts on the um, uh, Schillerplatz Park, or Schillerplatz, they say, uh, near the Schiller Monument was one part of the exhibition. The second part was in the studio at the Academy facilities, and it went well. It went also very violent in a certain moment, but what it showed, power power of the students because you can ask everything but you can ask anything when somebody has a concept and has a vision and this was fantastic to see these visions today we repeat uh, some of uh, uh, the ideas and also add uh, other positions because people do different things. Some are uh, doing many different uh, stuff together. Others are performers. Uh, the third are actually uh, spoke persons for very precise ideas, what means human rights, refugees, and uh, all other people who need this uh, thoughts to be put clear, and it's also a workshop that you see what means education. Education is one of the most restrictive in mo and most, I will say, ideological and most discriminatory element in institutions today. So the academy is not outside of this, I because it's all about power, it's all about uh, uh, different processes, but this is neoliberal global capitalism, and uh, we have also, uh, let's say, uh, more uh, talk about 
uh, for example, the booklet that, that we published. So if I say the name, Ju Yu Asma Ayad will be the start. They will sit here and actually take us through what is the title Invisible Women, but is much more about, not only about this, is much more about different processes of racialization, and I think we will learn a lot. Then, immediately after is uh, uh, Mohammed Numan. He likes to be called Numan, and we co call him Numan strictly. He will talk about the refugee protests, or maybe he will talk about his life. That is an unbelievable science fiction, but it's reality. It's a horror story on many levels, but it's also a power, like also for the first two positions. Then will be the presentation of the system of work, because we made a publication. You have your pub this publication in your hands. And, uh, uh, or if not, please go and take. It will be uh, Mika Maruyama and Jovita Pristoshek, and then it's a pause. Yes, boss? Okay, a pause, it's a lunch, and then after this, uh, it's uh, uh, the workshop that we are all looking forward. It will be inside the place where we had the food, and it's actually Katerine Lennerer, uh, the teacher with the st uh, new methodologies how to teach in a society that want to live together, not just pure integration, with fantastic three pupils. They are there. And we will learn something because they will tell us many things that we have to be aware. After it's a pause, and then it's coming Sis and me, Eureka Schuler, that I don't know where is she now, but preparing a performance here. Then it's a pause, and then it's our next guest. They pr they will present themselves. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ara, but they they are outspoken, so they don't need any background, they will say all what we have to know. So this is uh, for the first part. I want to say something too, uh, because we're speaking English and I know how, you know, it's important to understand about translations. Uh, if people, not everybody understand English, so we should find a way how we can translate, you know? And yeah, I know that's a, a, a self-organized thing, it's not always easy to, but I think it's important to, to create a way that everybody can, like we can, communicate that English doesn't have, cannot be the only language that we speak here. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so if, if there is a need, so please let's, let's find a way to organize that. Studio in the School of Art, on Tensual Malerain, I do performance, I do build, pintura, Escribo, música, rap. Eh. So, uh, my name is Yves Zurita. I, uh, I study in the Academy of Fine Arts, Contextuel Malaray, and I, I make collage, I paint, I write, I make music. Yeah. Eh, me uno a los movimientos antifascistas, eh, como movimiento feminista, movimiento Black Lives Matter, um, Cue, Cue Bay. Estoy, cuye, 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 cuye. Estoy en todos los movimientos, pero me catalogo una mujer um, particularmente fuerte, con una lucha incansable contra estos sistemas racistas. She said, like, yeah, she connects herself in many of struggles and movements as a Black Lives Matter, uh, a queer movement, and feminist movement, anti-fascist movement, but in a lot of movements, but she said her, herself in a kind of struggling against a very oppressive and racist system. My lucha is constant. It's constant. Okay. Una lucha revolucionaria. Soy cubana, yeah? Um... Eh, por ejemplo, expreso en mis letras de música lo que en mi trabajo, en la pintura, siempre reflejo mi, mi, lo que es la política, ¿no? La política resistente como mujer negra. ¿ya? She's from Cuba in her work and her collage and things that she does, she's always expressing her political issue, like coming from this position as a black woman. Ah, uh, sí, ya. Um, esta lo que ve. Eh, hacemos yo, lo realizamos yo y una amiga, eh, como soporte, siempre estamos en grupo, ¿no? Tratando de sobrevivir como artista, porque a raíz de la, 
de la pandemia, como eh, tenemos una situación precaria, ¿no? Entonces tratamos siempre de, de ir con, o a veces con expende, o a veces como soporte solidario, y así. So things that you've seen here, like is, she does with her friends, like selling t-shirts, because you know, like in the pandemic was even worse for artists, you know, like and for yeah. So it's sometimes people contribute with donation or buying her things, yeah. And yeah, this is a way how people that can want to support. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Vive. So hi, I'm Jill. I am originally from South Korea. And I am finishing my third year in um, academy with Marina. It has been such a nice journey. Um, and um, Asma, who are you? Uh, my name is Asma. I'm uh, a Viennese from Fünfhaus. If you are from Vienna, then you know Fünfhaus. It's like a, um, a very nice, uh, a very nice district with uh, with um, very diverse people. And um, yes, I'm also studying at Marina's class, concept art. And I had the pleasure to have um, this year's project with uh, Ju. And I think we'll tell you a little bit more about our project, about the process and um, uh, the topic we wanted to talk about or are still talking about. Yeah. So um, for some people like who has never been, uh, who hasn't been to the installation, so we did like a one installation and then one film stills like in the Schiller, uh, Schiller Park, Schiller Platz. And then basically we made like a, like a, there was a Schiller monument and then we made a, like a huge pink shadows with the chalk spray. And then um, in the pink spray, there's like a lot of statistics about, for example, like a, during the COVID time, like time, like a female um, health workers are kind of like being overlooked in the society or even like, um, um, in the developing countries during the COVID time, like a lot of female, um, domestic workers they got like overly worked and then also they got like a uh, less information about the COVID-19 um, information and stuff so we stayed it on the shadow and um, yeah for the film stills um, we um, decided to make a film whose main character is um, a woman with a Muslim background and then she was a uh, a girl whose name is Hadice, she was like super strong woman and then we made um, we are planning to finish our film in December and um, that's how we are planning to do so. And then I would like to actually like share some backstories about um, the installation and the how we interact with the with the community. So basically like a Schiller Platz is in the first district. It's in the I don't like it's in the like super posh area. You always see like a lot of uh, fancy Austrians with their fancy dogs and then they're just like doing it, never pick up dog poo, and then they just live in there and then they just walk around. And then, um, so on the very first day of installation, we actually met like a few gardeners, right, with the green shirts. And then um, there was like a guy who was just like, okay, what is this, what is this? And then I was like, uh, I was kind of like scared. I was like, okay, what, am, what are, are we doing right? And then um, the guy was just like, yeah, like he has so many questions. And then um, what did he say? He said like, uh, yeah, like this is um, really nice um, engagement with the public spaces. Yes. And then he liked it a lot. And he was also very happy to like to see art in public spaces mm -hmm. and not only because the Schillerplatz is um, in front of the academy. And he was very happy that art is not only happening in the academy or in museums or only in closed rooms, which also was our intention when we started to do this installation on the Schillerplatz and not on the class to have arts also in, in public. And he was very happy that this is happening out there and happening on the Schillerplatz where everybody con could walk around. And uh, yes, and I think he was also very happy that he see this, like this topic mm -hmm. and these things which, which, which are happening here. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't the only f guy. Like, I think it was very interesting also to see yeah. the reaction of the people. So yeah. maybe you can tell more about other reactions. Yeah, so we met a one grumpy guy also. He was just like, a, yeah, why the fucking academic students take this park all the time? And then they party every single time and then blah, blah, so. And also we met this lady who asked like if um, you think this pink shadow is beautiful. And then and then she asked like, do you guys think this is beautiful? And then I, I really stopped myself and I asked like, is this actually beautiful? Uh, for me, was it a, a very nice um, um, meeting with a guy from the construction worker because the academy is still under contra construction. And then there came a guy who was, um, his background, like he was Palestinian. And he came there and he only saw like women with headscarves. And then he saw me and then he started asking what is going on there? What are you doing? What is this exactly? And so on. And I don't know if he knew that he is 
do the construction work for the art academy because he was working. He was working. I think for him it doesn't matter. It's just work. And then I told him that that is the art academy and the work he's doing there, like and the work we're doing here is like um, some artistic work. And that's for me very interesting because uh, when I have to to deal with a lot of people from my community, um, um, like Egyptian, Arabs, um, African community, whoever. Um, um, it's some. It's, it's often very interesting, and, and I knew it like from the, from my family background. When I tell them that this work I'm doing here is art, that often they ask themselves, and that was also very interesting. The point you say is it beautiful or not? It's sometimes not a matter of of something being beautiful or not, because for them the topics I deal with are like very es essential topics, like top topics of not only creating something beautiful, it's like more of topics of survival, topics of um, essential, topping of daily life. And um, our movie, which deals with this topic, and, uh, and the, we had only pictures from this movies, from this movie we are creating, was dealing with the simple life of uh, Muslim women and uh, what with what images you have to deal with every day and um, which images she has to go through every day. And... Um, it reminds me a little bit that my project I applied with to the university when I started uh, studying at the university. And uh, that was also a very long process for me to, to start studying at the university because at the beginning I was thinking this art word, and uh, to come also back why I'm talking about this, is something which is not for us. We like why should we do art? We have we have to do more essential things than art. And at this time, art wasn't for me maybe um, a method to talk about topics which are very important for me, uh, like racism, Islamophobia, um, um, identity, and so on. And um, I can remember at this time I was I was at the university, and maybe it's also like interesting for people who wants to apply. Also for you, maybe you want to apply to this <laughs> art university. Um, that at this time I thought, okay, what should I do there? I went to this building. I see so many people, and I was so unsure. And I was, I really thought to break it up and go. And then there was a wonderful mo woman. She's standing behind this tree, Marissa. And I can remember this day. I told her, Marissa, I think I will go home. I will not do this. I, I don't want to start at this university because those people here, here have like other understanding of everything than me. And she, she, she I can really rem uh, remember this day. She hugged me so tight and told me, you're going to stay here. You're going to do this. And you have something to say. And then we started doing this work. And it was ex the same topic. It was how people and how people at um, this space uh, see you, see you maybe as a, a woman of color, as a, a Muslim woman, and so on, and see you and, and with what images they have. And I think that was also our, our uh, aim with this uh, movie, or still is our aim of this movie, to talk about this um, and it, it's really like like different glasses people put on when they see you. And it's maybe now the Muslim woman, but I think maybe people, other people from you here have the same problem. What what glasses people put on when they look at you? When they look at you as a black woman, as a woman of color, as a queer person, as whoever. And um, in this movie, we really wanted to take to take off this um, this 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 views this. A view of, of, of me as uh, oppressed, a view of me as uh, some something exotic, uh, a view of me of something uh, which is uh, very uh, foreign or, or what else. And we wanted to say, and people see often to, to this piece of, of, of clothes, see so much things which I feel and, and also want to take it off of, uh, of me. But I think the things which they have to take off is from themselves, like like their view, their um, their uh, imagination, and so on. And therefore, I liked a lot um, in the beginning today when we started talking about um, to learn things, but to also unlearn things, because I think it's a lot of thing of unlearning too. We really think we come together because we have to learn from each other, but it's not only learning from each other. We really have to unlearn a lot of things too, things which affect us in our daily life. And um, I think the process of the, the, this project, I also learned a lot and I hope to unlearn and to forget all the things happened. Also, yeah, like the good thing about the project is um, we built up like ideas and the concept together. And the really good thing was that we also see the reaction with the public or we literally did a public intervention and then we see how people especially these um, like oceans in first district are getting uncomfortable when something is being seen like something like I don't know like 
yeah, like probably they're gonna be feeling uncomfortable with their like photos with the um, headscarf woman, and then probably they don't want to see that in their safe space. And then you see their um, uncomfortable anger for nothing, those kind of things. You sometimes witness that, or yeah, sometimes some people don't. Some people only want to keep their park in a really clean way. Um, yeah, and then it's it's really nice to. Also, um, for me, because I've always surrounded by this artsy partsy people, where it's like non-binary, non-very fuck racist, fuck fascist, and then I really see these people as like, okay, probably these people like noticing these people and then starting that we live in the same space, and then they're gonna be in somewhere, and then this is a really nice start to actually start art or make art or make some project, and then I think that was also really nice. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the point you said with like taking their space, which isn't yeah. their space, <laughs> yeah. um, Not at all. was, I think, something which was very, very yeah. essential. And I think it really um, hits the point of our project because we talked about invisible person and those person are not invisible like for example when we talk about this this big shadow this monument of women at the covid and what women do in the, uh, the whole covid situation those women are not really invisible they are made invisible the, the, the women doing so much work at this time or when we talk about our movie and we talk about invisible women of like muslim women or the general topic of our whole exhibition of divisible and in invisibility like the those people are not really invisible. They don't want to be invisible, but they are made invisible. And I think that was really the point of th th that showed us again when we started exhibit in the public, how also people wanted to make us invisible again. And um, uh, like also t like yesterday, there was also a racist attack uh, um, um, at our place, and um, where you really see that the people feel um, feel attacked only by your existence like you didn't do anything but only by your existence they feel attacked because it changed a lot of uh, things in power and and therefore i think um there are a lot of things changing in, in in nowadays society and i think that there are people coming and being more visible which this society don't want to see and i know that um also like in in, in uh, for example in my situation um, um as a muslim woman i know that this society has a problem with it to see uh, muslim women g uh, going to be teachers now holding workshops doing art um want to be lawyer want to be this and that and want to be more visible want to talk for themselves and they are not only more this uh, persons who are at the back end or in the fabric or cleaning and so on and uh, are not seen and when this is changing when this situation of power is changing when they say okay then they have a problem with it and then you also see uh, that that uh, the government and all of this really have uh, like um, now they talk about them now they have a problem with the headscarf now they have a problem with any other uh, things and at the end that's only a lie that's they, they don't care about uh, about uh, muslim women or women of color they only have a problem with people being visible and you see it in like totally different things also like for example if you know um, um, mirelle ingosso she is the first um, black uh, political uh, politician and she was in the first, like she's uh, sh her her office is in the first district. She was like responsible for the first district, and the people had a problem with it because to see a black woman like leading this district is for them like it's it's destroying them. It's destroying the image of uh, of these people living here. And I think therefore um, it's hard. It's really really hard. But um, I, I think we still have to resist. We have to be w to find our ways to go through this hard situation of. Um, trying to make us invisible all the time and find our way to still still stay visible and uh, and to let not us take take us out from the place because after this racist attack yesterday my first thought uh, thought was I don't want to exhibit in the public anymore I I want to um, I like that's that's it from it I maybe then then only in safe spaces and then when I talked to Marina and you said no that's exactly what they want from you they that's exactly what they they try to do with this and I'm not the person who's like shy and say oh my god no and I don't want to do it anymore but after this I was so pissed off and I said like why why is this happening but I think for sure it's hard and you have to um, recover and uh, be strong back come str strong back again but then you have to continue doing this so yeah our our fight for still be visible will be long I think but uh, that's 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 it
I am the one of the stories of thousands of the refugees because I came to Austria as a refugee. But I will go in the back of my stories, how it happened, why it happened, and how did I came to this university, and how did I manage till today, or what is going to be my art projects in futures as well. I was born in 1987 in United Arab Emirates, which is one of the modern country at the moment, but when I born, it was like completely desert. And at that time, around my parents, I felt like I'm safe. But with the time being, as soon I got like adult and I got to know my living conditions, I opened up like, well, I am in a monarchy system, actually, where there was a lot of slavery in early years, and Dubai is a monarchy country. And I thought, well, this is not where I want to be. Or I, it could be they are monarchy systems, but I might deserve something else because my parents have done a lot for that country. And I educated myself in Arabic language and into English schools. And a lot of my friends, like, my childhood time was, like, only from Middle East, so I doesn't have any background where I come from, actually. I doesn't have any connection. So I applied for the citizenship when I was in the age of 18 because a few friends of mine told us, well, you can demand a residency permit if you would not have left Middle East. But I was got rejected by Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed. Due to that, they changed the rules. They said, well, we are giving the citizenships to those who came to our countries before we found out the oil. So your parents has migrated from Pakistan when we found out the oil. So you all came after that. So due to that, you don't fit to that criteria. And I said, well, I have my friends, and they are like into that. And they said, well, their parents were a bit earlier than that. So that's the reason. That's a, well, that's a difference. And that's like we have been in the same classes. So it's like fault of our parents who migrated earlier or who left like a bit later. And when I came like outside, and I was meeting a friend of mine, and I said, OK, well, Fuck, I don't care about this money and shit, what I could live out of it. And I destroyed like a bill of 100 dirhams. And unfortunately, I realized that that was a crime. And that was a, on the same time, like one to second minutes, there was police on my shoulder and said, well, we have to take you away. And I said, what it means? It could be damage. It could be happen anytime. anytime. And they took me, and then they called my parents to bring my passport. And they said, well, your son is going to be sent back to Pakistan on the next flight. So the next six hours, you have to be there with the passport at the airport. And my dad doesn't know what I have done or what I was doing. He has no idea because he was like worker. And then my father, I couldn't have met him. and. They took the passport and sent it back to me, and then I ended up in Pakistan, <laughs> and I was never been there. So for me, it was a question, okay, what do I do now? Where do I go? But I still know my name of family, so I took the taxi and went to my grandparents' house and lived over there. And I said, well, it's not like Dubai. People are different. Mentality is different. Education is different. Uh, we are speaking, talking, behaving so different, but I can't fit to that. And it was like very hard to me, and I said, okay. And, and somehow, okay, I was like in Dubai, going to pubs and clubs, and start drinking in Dubai, and then they said, in Pakistan, the family said, well, you are destroying our reputation of your whole generations. And I said, okay, what does that mean now? 
And then they said, well, we want to keep our positions up. So for us, it is a topic that we want to send you out of the country. So it's our wish that you migrate somewhere. And then I said, okay, well, where I'm going to go? In a safe space. And that was like a lot of things been heard like from the family. Okay, well, you can go to Europe the way you, your mindset is. And I said, okay. And they organized a journey and sent it me abroad. And I said, okay. And I crossed Iran, Turkey, and Greece I reached. And then there was like 2012, the time the story was, well, there was a killing of migrants in Greece at that time. And I said, okay, do you think I'm safe in this country? It's a part of Europe when hundreds of people are being killed every day and the police can't do anything resistantly. And well, there was a bad timing. And then they said, well, what you can go do, you should leave to further countries. And then I was like moving from there on from Serbia, Macedonia, Serbia, and finally I met a very nice person, a group who explained the whole European system. And there was like from no border groups, the youth who really put their efforts to exchange their contacts. I will never forget about that. And then they said, well, it was not the first safe country, but you know, the Europe is more further. You are in a Balkan route at the moment, trucks, and it's also not safe. But when you go to the safest country, try to contact us. And then when I ended up in Austria, they took me, like I was crossing, and the Schlepper just left on the side of the Burgerland and picked up by the police and brought to the Triskirchen camp. And I opened up my eyes and I said, well, what's now that big building and a lot of people? And well, it was, I said, is it the same as the people lives in Dubai? Like 30 square meter with eight different peoples. And I wrote it back to that group and they put it me in a group connections in Vienna with Marisa Lobo, which was like very nice contact person and the others as well. And I said, well, what I'm going to do over here? And the story starts from there that I said, okay, well, how many people came because of, like, similar to me? And the problems are not being solved. Unhuman's conditions, though we call it a humorous country. And I just started reflecting on my own life and then I started to talk to the other refugees. But they have, like, fears about what they're going to do when they're coming in this country. And I said, well, it's better to go back to your parents, to your families, to say you're not being welcomed and we couldn't achieve and that's it. And then I met like Marisa, she, she was studying at the Academy of Fine Arts with p my professor Marina. And it was like, a, I found it out like, well, that's the education what we are learning today, not like what the professors are teaching and the students are teaching and professors are learning and doing the best way to implement with the new ideas actually, how the life should go on. And then with the biggest support, we built up a, one of the biggest refugees protests of Austria with the migrants in 2012. And we was like, leading me, Marisa, and other students from the class, marching for 40 kilometers into city center, sitting, making hunger strikes, occupying church, occupying universities. And then we said, like Marisa was telling, like, okay, Numan, have a look. You know what? You are being fucked up in this country. What you can do, you will get asylum papers you will never able to go to your home country back to your to see your family because you're not from um, civil war and you have a family background behind. You're not economical refugees where you just leave your family away. As a refugee, what 
you are granted a protection, but you cannot travel to your home country. That's the asylum means. And then there was a lot of struggle to make my portfolio, putting it to the university, going to the new way of studying, and talent to be fined, actually, because there was a talent to um, encourage the people. I think so that's the talent of art. And I think so I'm not a painter or someone, but maybe I had a talent to reflect to the people where they can think about themselves. And that's the reason they selected me, and it was like really, I'm glad and thankful for that. And then it was like, I was in a process of applying and things, and then we was like in a whole protest, like we got criminalized, we was like one of the baddest p group in Austria uh, being deported, some eight people got deported, eight people was in prison for over a, 18 months, and then there was a fear of being like leader role of mine. I could also go to the prison, and there was investigation behind of mines like undergrounds, but that's like really, in the end they found, okay, he was just a stupid person coming where we was back to him and he just reacted to us. And yeah, the question start from there, like in Austria we say, or encouraged by the immigrants, a story of a successful immigrant we want to hear. And Austria want to be saying a proudly way, you see, this immigrant is integrated, and we are proud of that. But there is another role of the society who want to integrate, but you don't let him to integrate. You break the barriers, put every single barriers on, over the years and years, and a lot of problems like, say, you, we don't want that you will be integrated. And then in the end, you can blame and I was like coming as an asylum seeker, so when I came, applied for as a student, so I was the same person, but I had two different identities, where I'm poor and rich. If I'm being controlled now, they say, well, he's a stupid uh, third country student, rich, who is financing himself. But I'm not financing everywhere, I'm depending on my friends. And since a long story to the shorter, let's say, um, the time there was a Vucic has started up because it was a really bad time of the on the Balkan roads and being as a ex-speaker of the refugees movement in Austria and I was giving a statement in front of the European House actually. I remember that time. And suddenly of that time when I made a statement that I am going there actually as a student and with my students class and stuff like that. And since that time, they didn't prolong my residency permit in Austria because it was a bigger statement. I think so. I, it, I was too harsh to them to say to open the borders, to let the people come in. And then somebody has to pay the price. But yeah. And in short, from that time on, like my worst timing started up because I lost my residency permit and I was like getting into deep sheets. And then and the end of the, thanks to God, it started pandemic. When you are in shit anyway, and you are hoping, okay, 2020 will be the better chance when the university will start, and pandemic starts, and it like really sucks. And I was actually on that time of point of my life, I would have given up and said, okay, I'm going back to my home, home country. I can't survive anymore. Uh, lack of a lot of resources and everything. And then it was a, one of my best friends I got to know ever. And sh she just invited me at one place and said, Naman, come on. You are invited. And invitation is basically for one, one day or one week. But it was so nice. And maybe understanding of the other people, I would be like really be appreciated if I could mention their name, but I c cannot. At the moment, I don't have rights for them. Um, it was where I got like first resources in the pandemic time to say, take a break, reflect, and continues being invisible in the society. 
So I was disappeared from Vienna and then I'm getting call like from different people. Well, there was a deportation and we heard that you're gone. And I said, well, I'm not gone. I'm in Austria. But I will see you very soon. And yeah. And today I'm here. And that's like, I think so, uh, one of the successful stories of this refugees movement. And I'm really thankful and glad for Marisa Lobo, who has really encouraged me to come to the university and to giving this reflecting back, actually, smashing world, actually. So it's the one of the biggest thing where I think so we have a, in a common things where we are standing each other, uh, next to each other. And thanks to you as a professor, being supportive to your students and giving them the possibilities, what they want to do, and to guiding them. Yeah, and I'm thankful for your, the way you did yesterday at the park and reacted and putting this issue of, if you want to make us invisible, we are going to be visible. You can't take our visibility away. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Mika. Hello, my name is Evita. So uh, we're going to present this uh, booklet that you can also get, uh, uh, I think, inside a house. So this is kind of booklet of the show by the post-conceptual art practices at uh, the post-conceptual art studio at the academy. And also there is uh, the program of today's event yeah so uh, we are the editor of this catalog with Marina and I have to say that uh, I'm we are such a privilege to do like uh, working uh, editing this book because uh, I also like for me it's also the kind of the opportunity to reflect on what's going on now and also what happened during the COVID situation. And especially this uh, project, the exhibition, Visibility of Invisibility, is uh, as like the Azman Joel said, it's clearly said about what thing, which kind of things are invisible in the society. And when we were also editing this book and also, when I was writing this uh, editor's note, I also went back to the collective diary note, which the, the studio started when the pandemic happened. And I was like kind of reflecting what happened. So like the, the diary, the students started collectively, it's a kind of mixture of feeling, the feeling of contradiction, feeling of uh, contradiction or confusing, or like uh, this, like uh, the stress, or also like kind of junction between the like, information what happened to to their life. So like a uh, new restrictions or new control, and especially this show by the student is talk kind of more concerning about the public space because the, we have been witnessing what happened in the public space, especially how the police control or how the White, split, white spermacies kind of control the body, which kind of body can be in the public space, or which kind of behavior we are allowed to do or to conduct in the public space. And especially after editing this book and sh seeing the works by the student, I also thought, of course, some bodies, for example, the people of color or refugees or queer people, they are made invisible. But at the same time, that this white supremacy are also invis invisible to them because this white supremacy is so normalized and the violence is so normalized every day. And it's, I mean, we are just used to be controlled by this, uh, the 
ideology or like the power. So like uh, for me, it's kind of interesting for me, like how the students or like the reaction of the people to the student work, it's also kind of make this invisible power visible. And then I'm sure that this like invisibility of this power is also connected to the how the the history or colonialism and imperialism and aunt, uh, anti, you know, like Muslim, anti also like black people and anti Asian people regarding this COVID is also connected to everything. And then, I mean, I also wrote the editor's book because uh, in, in March, uh, the cultural, Kultur Gemma, which was also organized by the Marisa Lobo, we also had a guest, uh, Cheli Molaga. She's a Chicano a lesbian feminist thinker and uh, writer. And uh, what he, she said was really brilliant because she told us, we know what we know. Uh, we know more than we know. So like basically she kind of asked us to reflect which kind of body we have and which kind of history and which kind of experiences we carry with different bodies. And the most important thing is that she, she kind of insisting that we have to connect what we have together. And then it's not just about experiences, what we have, but in how we make a connection between the different experiences and different uh, bodies and history. So like for me, it's uh, the, the show that by the students and also like what the, uh, the three of students today said is really strongly said about this connection, how we kind of, of course, we talking about our own individual experiences, but like we kind of lead on it what we shared. So, I mean, this is also kind of good uh, empowerment for me, like how to kind of reflect the society and, and then the society and also the world in, in, the, in, in many ways. And of course, we kind of edit world but this is exactly how the world should be edited through not only the languages, but also the artworks and also like sharing, uh, sharing the, the, uh, their feelings and experiences. And then as yeah, people said, we have to be together to understand this, yeah, these things. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Yes, I think this uh, exhibition, visibility of the uh, invisible, is a clear um, uh, path of um, artistic practices uh, that have an agenda, that have an agenda of conviviality as potentiality, and that have an agenda of smashing worlds. Um, yesterday morning, when I was preparing my short speech, uh, um, I was thinking of maybe saying uh, a few words about each and every project. But after hearing all those students being there, saying things so loud and clear and precise, I changed my mind. So I decided to put forward two things that I think are important in the context of the exhibition uh, and both regard um, visibility. So one thing is making those uh, discriminations, racism, exclusions, visible. And the other thing is visibility as empowerment. Um, I think that within these few days, we experienced uh, much. Uh, we heard asthma and Jew. Um, we experienced um, stealing work, works soon after the uh, works were installed. We experienced pionage, um, ruining the works. Uh, we heard comments of passers-by that we cannot do such things, namely exhibition in public space, in public part, and that we will ruin the grass, that we will leave garbage behind, and so on, and all the way to uh, the racist, anti-Muslim assault. We knew public space has since its beginning been a structurally racist, uh, actually racial space of white private owners, excluding women, slaves, wage workers, children, etc. 
but the extent to which it became unsafe today for all those who do not fit this national so-called pure body is actually terrifying. Moreover, terrifying is actually the fact how hate and discrimination are now out in the open, like something completely normal and totally unreflected by those discriminating others. Students actually address this materiality of discrimination, racialization, exclusions, ignorance and violence through their experiences and through different artistic means but with one common goal, to make this normalized racism and violence visible. So the second point uh, about the exhibition I wanted to put forward concerned how students uh, manage to make shift from this digital confinement to digital agency. By way of bringing this digital moment, for example, statistics, maps, apps, artificial language, podcasts, QR codes, in connection to discrimination, exploitation, surveillance, confinement, directly into the public space and make it transparent and make it visible. And I think this is also what the Smashing Walls project agenda is. To smash the words of inequality and walls of exclusion. So all the positions presented at the exhibition, as well as at this very summer camp, speak of the fact that conviviality is not just a potentiality, but already materializing act of contesting and rejecting this omnipresent structural racism and small-mindedness. Okay, and, and I also want to emphasize, because the show in the public space and at the academy finished already, but if you go to this uh, booklet, you can see the student essays and text, and also there are many QR code, for example, so you can still access to the works, especially the podcasts and videos, and also the application apps, which is also quite important in, in Vienna because uh, the police control is really big now in Austria. So like we have to like come together to resist this thing. So like please take the booklet and go to the website to look at their works and then lead, please. Thank you. Il y a des murmures dans les fissures des effondrements sourds et la lumière qui ne jaillit de nulle part. que nos seules présences dans la rue, le métro, les stades, les bars et les cafés, les bureaux, les parlements et les maternités, ils disent que nos seules présences sont de trop. Mmh. 
Ils disent que nos amours insoumis ébranlent la certitude de leurs convictions en carton. Ils disent nous sommes et devrons demeurer éteintes. Ils disent nous sommes le silence. Le silence. Le silence. Le silence. It's time, it's time. It's time, it's time. It's time, it's time. It's time to unite. Nos existences tout entières sont des révolutions. Nos vies des points serrés. Nos voix des colères orageuses. It's time to unite. Nous unir, nous trouver, nous retrouver, retrouver, nous retrouver, refuser que nos corps, nos corps de gouine, nos corps de lesbiennes et de lélé, que nos existences noires, trans, dyke, soient montées comme des étagères Ikea identiques à l'infini. It's time, it's time. It's time, parce que nous sommes fortes et faibles, nous sommes grosses et minces, nous sommes poilus, nous sommes, nous sommes, nous sommes pauvres et puissantes, parfaites, créatives, craintives et enragées, nous sommes lélés sans excuses et sans honte, nous sommes lesbiennes. Il y a des murmures dans les fissures, des effondrements sourds et la lumière qui ne jaillit de nulle part. Il y a, il y a, il y a des murmures dans les fissures, des effondrements sourds et la lumière qui ne jaillit de nulle part. It's time. It's time, it's time. It's time, it's time. It's time to unite. It's time to unite. Car ce n'est pas à nous de nous taire, mais bien à eux de le faire. La lutte est ici, là-bas, maintenant. À l'intérieur de nos contradictions. Aux bordures de nos incohérences. Il est temps. Ouais, il est temps. Il est temps d'abandonner nos prétentions au titre de la parfaite queen. Ce n'est pas le tatou dans le dos ou les cheveux longs, le piercing dans le nez, non. Ce n'est pas l'intégrale lecture de Audre Lord, de Monique Wittig. Ce n'est pas, ce n'est pas refaire la chorégraphie de Titika, non. Ni écouter religieusement le double disque CD de Annie Di Franco, non. Ce n'est pas le poster de Zanelle Mouoli dans notre salon, non. non. Ce n'est pas nos plans à trois, nos cours de yoga, nos pierres spéciales, nos danses à poil, nos pompes bien cirées, nos débats passionnés, nos ruptures en drama, nos querelles sorores, nos exclusivités, nos repas végés, tout ça, tout ça, tout ça, non. Tout ça, non. It's time, it's time. It's time. Nous sommes capacité à changer, à aimer, à construire et surtout à marcher ensemble. Malgré, 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 malgré. Parce qu'il n'est désormais plus question qu'il parle à notre place. Il n'est désormais plus question qu'il tranche dans nos salaires. Il n'est désormais plus question qu'il choisisse pour nos ventres. Qu'il nous dise quel corps enlacé. Qu'il nous dise quelle chatte léchée. When was the last time? When was the last time? When, when, when was the last time? When, when, when was the last time? When 
When was the last time? When was the last time you asked? When was the last time? When was the last time you ask your When was the last time? When was the last time you ask your sister? When was the last time? When was the last time you ask your When was the last time you ask your sister? When was the last time? And she answered. Le sang. Le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang. Le sang. Le sang, 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 soleil, le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang, rideau, le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang. When was the last time you asked your sister? When was the last time? When was the last time you asked your sister? Le sang. Le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang, shame, le sang, summer, le sang, the black curtain, le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang, his dick, le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang, his weight, le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang, le sang, the shame, le sang, the shame, le sang, le sang, when was the last time you asked? When was the last time you asked your sister? When was the last time? Faut-il passer tous les rubicons le sang? Slalomer entre les regards mal le sang? Faut-il rentrer la tête, se cacher sous la table le sang? When was the last time? When was the last time you asked your sister? When was the last time? 